Hi friends. So in this video, we are going to talk about how we can transfer memory from uh, CPU to the GPU and GPU to the CPU and how we can like transfer data uh, between the CPU and GPU when there is a separate memory for the CPU and GPU. So I have a couple of examples I want to share with you on how to do this. So this is my first example. Here I'm just uh, showing our basic framework. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the user pass the number of uh, blocks. So we are going to use CUDA. So the number of CUDA blocks that we have and in each block we'll have certain number of threads. So those threads are given by this block dim here how many threads per block and the number of blocks are given by the num blocks. So if the user does not exactly enter three arguments, which are first is the name of the binary we are using and the number of blocks and the block dimensions, then we say it's an error. Then we basically read the number of blocks and the uh, uh, dimensions for each block. So the number of threads in each blocks uh, and uh, CUDA has a rest restriction that each block cannot have more than 1024 threads. So if that's the case, then we again give like this message that it should be less than or equal to 1024. And then if that's, uh, and then we just return. And then uh, we say like, then we'll do our things. So this is like the basic framework. And let's, I'll just show you how that would work in this example. So let's say I enter something like, uh, example one and I just entered three so that won't do because I enter number of blocks but I did not tell them how many uh, number of threads I want in each block so now if I do let's say uh, uh, I'll enter nine 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 so that's also a problem because in each uh, block we can only have up to one zero two four so now let's say if I enter thousand so that would work and then I say let's do this. So now we can do something with this. So I'm building on this example one in my example two. And that's basically this is what uh, I'm going to do. So up till this point, our things are exactly same. The highlighted version here is exactly same. So what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to allocate some memory on the CPU side using malloc and uh, then I'm going to initialize this array basically uh, to its index. So that's why a of i equals i and then I'm going to uh, make another pointer and this one is going to be the device side array. So this is the memory that will be accessible to the GPU because the CPU and the GPU cannot share the same memory. So for that, we are using something called as CUDA malloc. So let me show you the definition of CUDA malloc from this useful website that I have found from uh, CMU. So basically, CUDA malloc uh, needs the device pointer. Uh, that's where we'll initialize the memory and the um, size like how much memory do we need so going back to our code so we need that da is our device uh, array and then uh, again we need the same size of memory that we needed for the cpu side so once we have this now we can do something called as cuda mem copy so i'll again share uh, the definition for that with you guys so that is here. So basically it again expects a destination source, uh, the size and the kind of transfer. So the transfer can be either host to device or device to host, device to device or host to host, where generally the host is the CPU and the device is the GPU. Um, so notice here it's just a void star while if you go to CUDA malloc, it's a void star star. So they expect this double star, so pointer. So that's why if you notice in my malloc, I have this ampersand sign here uh, and I don't have that in my mem copy. So anyway, so this is the destination DA and then A is our uh, source 
and then we are basically copying from host to device then i call my addition kernel so this is the function that would actually execute on the device and through this function you need to tell it uh, uh, the number of blocks you want to run the number of CUDA blocks and how many threads you want in each uh, block so those things are given here uh, in this uh, triple angular brackets like this so that's the syntax for kernel calls and then you tell it what are the arguments so here the argument is just the pointer and if you see on the top here I have that function here so it's just uh, it takes that argument it calculates the thread ID which I'm calling TID so uh, each uh, block will have its unique uh, block ID and then you multiply by that by the block dimension and then we have a unique thread ID so basically block 0 let's say it has 10 threads so that uh, this part uh, will be 0 for block 0 and then this will go from 0 to 9 then uh, the block 1 uh, the block dim is 10 okay if there are 10 threads so this part will be basically 10 and then again this is 0 to 9 so this will go from uh, 10 to 19 uh, so that's how we will have unique TID for each thread in uh, uh, all blocks and then we are adding that thread ID again to our original value in ATID which was actually initialized here and uh, so yeah that's all we are doing and then we have to copy it back like this and then we can uh, then we can print it out so this is our example 2 and let's see if that example I've already compiled it uh, so again let's do it for 4 and 4 so if you see we added things twice so at thread id 0 0 plus 0 is 0 thread id 1 1 plus 1 is 1 and this goes up to 16 so uh, the last thread ID is 15 so 15 plus 15 is 30 so this is how we can transfer memory and do something so right now we are not doing much with it but this is the basic framework so usually there is a malloc and then you can mem copy your uh, content from host to device then you call some kernel and then you uh, copy back from device to host and then you can like print it out or do something more whatever you want and in this case there was the CPU values were actually something valuable if let's say it was all zeros or something we don't care and then we are going to actually initialize it on the GPU then basically this call that would be not there and because we don't need to copy anything from the CPU so yeah this is the basic framework for copying stuff from uh, CPU to GPU and we'll do more advanced thing, uh, things in future videos uh, but that's all for now so thank you